right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, it's nice to be back together again, I have to say. I like this coffee with the coaches idea. So I am Anna Gibbs. I am the general manager for Keller Williams Hudson Valley Group, which um, is comprised of three offices. We have Keller Williams Hudson Valley in New City, and we are joined by Meralda Morell, who is the productivity coach there. And we uh, also have Keller Williams Hudson Valley United, which is, um, it sits in Middletown, New York, but it services Orange and Rock, excuse me, Orange and Sullivan counties. And we're joined by the productivity coach there, who is Ann Margaret Bolton. So hi, Ann Margaret. Good morning. Hi, good morning. And then our newest market center is Keller Williams Hudson Valley North, which we launched in January of this year. And that is servicing Ulster, Columbia, Green, and Dutchess counties, just to name a few. And that um, is, the productivity coach there is led by Rita Gildersleeve. So hi, Rita. Hi. Hi. And um, so we're excited because we decided to start this series called Coffee with the Coaches. And um, we have our coffee and we are the coaches. So we're hoping to have a great conversation with all of you around um, productivity and what really helps to create success in your world. And I think that if you are in any business, you're gonna find value in this conversation. Uh, we're joined on Zoom by a lot of our agents and we're happy to have you guys here with us too. And for those of you who are, who are with us on Zoom, if you have questions for us, please use the chat and we'll get to that uh, throughout the, the time that we have together. And uh, if you're on Facebook Live, you can feel free to make comments there too and we'll try to catch up with you at some point. So, so anyway, good morning ladies and I'm excited that we can keep doing this. I think this is a good platform and a good forum for agents to, uh, to kind of learn more about coaching and how we can help them grow their business. Um, so Rita, I'm just gonna start with you. How many people are you currently working with in the Market Center? Uh, I currently have 48 agents coaching with me, um, and that includes uh, two teams that I coach. I, mm -hmm. I work with agents on two of our larger teams, um, one in our North office and one in our Hudson Valley United office. Cool. And um, you've been coaching for how long now? I'm in my third year, so about two, two and a half years. Awesome. And um, what do you think um, is, is part of the pathway to being successful, right? And success has a lot of different meanings for people. Um, but what do you think an agent or any, any individual in business really needs to develop or um, have in terms of their behavior and mindset to be successful? I think that with the new agents, the ones that I see come in and are really successful right off the start are the ones that are learning based, meaning that they show up to our weekly coachings. I do a group coaching. I do a one-on-one -on -one coaching with them and they, they show up week, week after week and, and not just um, show up and sit in the meeting and listen, but they actually execute then on the ideas that we're talking about. And so I think uh, what, what I'm seeing over and over again is the ones that, that are taking the classes that we have to offer and are listening to podcasts and reading books and really um, in, like just engrossing themselves fully in the real estate business are the ones that are quickly starting to build up a database and put deals together. And we're, we're seeing agents in our office in their first 30 days have accepted offers, have new listings, you know, working with their first clients. And a lot of that, I think, comes with... Um, you know, that desire and drive that somebody has to continue to learn about building a new craft for themselves. Yeah, that, so you're, you're, uh, what you're talking about is being learning based, having a commitment to growth and, and, and learning what will make you successful in the business as well as, is personal development too? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I think that there's, it, for many people, they're coming from a completely different background where they might not have any sales experience or any business experience. We're working with former teachers and nurses and all, you know, people that come from a range of different industries before they get into real estate. And I think that 
Um, even though they might be new to, new to real estate though, where we are able to connect their value proposition and the, you know, the breadth of work they've done so far to creating a value proposition for their clients. But the ones that I see succeed quickly are the ones that really want to learn the skills that, it, that you need to learn in order to grow a big real estate business. And they're open to feedback and, and collaboration with other people. Yeah, I think being open to feedback is huge, right? Because coaching only works if you're coachable. And right. so we have to, you know, maintain an open mind about, you know, the things that we might need to look at differently or, um, you know, just take take the, the guidance from what a coach can provide. And I love that you're seeing new agents getting into production very quickly because I think there's a myth in the real estate industry that it takes a long time to build a business and make money. And that's really not what we see at KW. No. And I also think that a lot of times what I hear these new agents say is, Oh, people have told me that the income's unpredictable and you never really know when your next closing's coming. That's what I've heard about selling real estate. And I, I couldn't um, disagree with that more. You can absolutely create a predictable, even stream of income as long as you're doing the right activities consistently and you're in the right mindset that you're starting as a small business owner, essentially, and you have to build from the ground up, um, you know, the business for yourself. Yeah, and whether you're brand new or you've been doing this for a long time, that would be true. Right. So this is true for any agent. Yeah, absolutely. And Margaret, thank you, Rita. And Margaret, what is your take on uh, what it takes to be successful? I think a lot of it is mindset, um, self-esteem. You know, uh -huh. what you tell yourself is what you're capable of doing. Um, being resilient. You know, not every day is going to be perfect and it's not going to be easy. Um, yeah. But if you have a good foundation and keep your goals at your forefront, and like, you know, Rita said, you follow the activities um, that are proven to work. Yeah. You can have a predictable business. I totally yeah. Agree with so that. being resilient, right? That's just having the ability to stick to it and the ability to come back. Um, I think that's huge and, and having a little bit of grit so that you know, um, you've been in the business how long in Margaret? 25 years. 25 years. So you, you would be what we call a veteran. And I think that, you know, coming into now being a productivity coach, you know, you're able to not only um, support the business models and do it through the coaching, um, you know, uh, structure, but you have so much information and knowledge based on your own experience. I mean, have you had to show some grit and some resiliency over the years to stay in this business? Absolutely. You know, I used to joke around, you know, every three or four months, I'm out, I'm getting a real <laughs> job, I'm out of here. And that's just a real, real fear or comment to make, right? I mean, I think a lot of small business owners have said that to themselves. It's not easy. Right. Meralda, what do you think in terms of what it takes to be successful? What's your thoughts on that? Like Rita said, um, you know, learning based is a very large um, portion of being successful. Um, whether you're a new agent or seasoned, there's always something new to learn. Yeah. So learning is cons consistent. You need to be consistent with the learning. Um, I think that there's a lot of traits of successful people. I think that one of them, the main one for me, is focus. Focusing on your time, not letting things or other people distract you. Um, I think that's a, a big key. Um, also, persistence, not getting discouraged, not giving up. Um, successful people just don't give up. And that's what you just have to keep on with your persistence. But I think that the number one thing would be integrity. So without integrity, truthfully, I don't think any of the other traits really matter. You need that's to really be... That's really interesting. Yeah, you, you need to be... Um, honest, dependable. You need to set a good example for those around you. Um, I think that that is, you know, you can't compromise your principle. So I think that that is the number one thing for successful people is your integrity. Without yeah. that, you really don't have anything else. Yeah, I, I would have to say that is so important because, you know, who you are in this business matters, right? And uh, how you treat other people and the way you do business is everything. So that, that's a great point. Um, and Margaret touched on something that I'd like to get into. Uh, you mentioned the word mindset 
Anne Margaret. What? How would you define mindset? Um, I mean, basically, your mindset is where you're coming from yourself, and relates to your self-esteem and how you look at yourself in the world, and also the self-dialogue that you have with yourself. Uh -huh. So what, what you're putting into yourself is what you're putting out there. And what you're putting out there is what you're getting back. Yeah, for sure. Rita, how important is mindset in the journey of success? I honestly think, I know you, they say like 80, per, your business is 80% mindset. I think it's like or 95. 90. <laughs> I think yeah. it's like 95%. Yeah. I mean, there, this business, it's not a difficult business. It's not a complicated business. We talk to people, we help, you know, clients buy and sell real estate. And yet not every agent goes out and builds a huge book of business for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that the only difference is the mindset that somebody has. And so I, um, in, in thinking about defining what the mindset is, I know your, your first re when something comes into your brain, right? Your first reaction is your gut reaction. That's what you've been trained to think and maybe conditioned based off of all the experiences you've had in your life so far. Your true mindset is on that second thought that you have after that, right? So on the second thought that you have after that initial gut reaction really does define what your mindset is around, around your life. And so I think that that's where a lot of growth opportunities can happen is in that second that second little piece of information um, and second actionable item comes in, what you decide to do with that will determine your success or, or failure really in any business, not just real estate. Well, I think that mindset is probably 90 or 95% of your success. Um, you know, we see this a lot in, in our business or, you know, even in our company, uh, Gary Keller wrote the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book, and the first 99 pages of this book is all mindset. So that tells you, right, the priority was that the, before we could go into any other model or system about building your business, it's got to start up here. And so that is a huge part of success. And, you know, your mindset can change throughout the day. And I think that, um, it's something that we have to become more and more aware of, right? And especially right now, I mean, it's a challenging time, right? I don't think we, uh, any of us could disagree that this is, you know, uncharted territory. It's, it's, a, it's a challenging time. We've been dealing with the COVID pandemic for several months now and how that's affected our industry and the way agents do business. Uh, now we're seeing, um, civil unrest and we're seeing, you know, parts of the country affected by that right here in New York is, is um, you know, affected by that. And, and, you know, that can lead to a lot of feelings. And so that's going to affect your mindset. So as a coach, um, in your experience, I'll start with Rita and working with the agents, how often does mindset come up in conversation? It, every coaching call, really, it comes down, down to mindset. And, and I think that there's two separate mindsets that most people have. You have a fixed mindset, right? Or, or a growth mindset. And it's not that if you have a fixed mindset now that that's the way that you'll always be. I think that that's one of the values that you can get through coaching is really working with somebody if you feel like you do have a fixed mindset that can help you move more into, into a growth mindset. And so just to kind of um, define the two, a fixed mindset is somebody that thinks, you know, essentially that their failure is their limit, right? That their failure is just the end of the, the line for you, or that either they're good at something or they're not, right? I'm sure we've all heard that. Well, I'm just not good at that, or I just don't think that that's for me. Um, that That's a very fixed mindset around things, and that can be very detrimental, especially in our industry where you do have to grow a book of business for yourself. You do have to be in the right mindset to go through, you know, the just the trials and tribulations of growing a small business. Um, and so pretty much the majority of my coaching calls at some point we do touch on um, their mindset. And a lot of it comes down to the habits, 
right? Their mindset is usually tied directly to their habits. And I'm sure everybody can relate to that. On days when you're in a great mindset, do you have good habits for yourself? Are those the days where you eat healthy and you exercise and you might read things, um, you know, that are motivational? And then conversely, have you had days where you've had a bad day, right? And that's when the junk food comes out or the stress or the you're snapping at who, whoever's in that you've been trapped in the house with for three months, right? I think that those, that the key is to stay in the, in the mind, in the, the first mindset, right? And, and recognize when you're getting into the, the, the second mindset, what habits can you put into your day that will ultimately help you, you know, move out of a more fixed or negative mindset into a positive one. And we talk about that a lot during coaching. Yeah. Um, I would imagine you would. That was, that was great. Meralda, how about you and your experience? You know, I'm sure mindset comes up with your coaches. Mm -hmm. What are some of the conversations about, you know, without, uh, you know, naming any names, certainly, but what are some of the mindset issues that you think agents are facing right now? Well, I think um, going back to the growth mindset, uh, which is the belief that you are actually in control of your own ability. And I think that that's basically right now, especially during um, the stay at home period, um, that's what most of the new agents need to grow their mindset in, that they have that ability. Um, hard work and persistence is very important. But if you don't believe that you are in control of your own destiny, then, you know, you're not going to be in the right mindset. So that's basically what I'm coaching them. They need to I have that ability. That. They, need to, they really do need to um, be in control. They need to know they yeah. are in control. And we all are. We're all in control of what we do. Yes. And I think that we have to focus more on what we can control rather than the things that are out of our control. Like exactly. I mentioned, it's a challenging time right now. And I think that, you know, in my opinion, as a coach, worrying is a waste of your energy, right? Because it's, it's focusing your time and energy on something that you can't change. That's why we're worried about it. And so if we can shift our attention and our mindset to the things that we can control, like the activities in our business, that's what puts us back in the driver's seat, as you said, Moralda, right? Where we're back in control of our destiny. Yep, and it starts, exactly. I think the core to mindset is belief. Because yep. if you, whatever you believe is true to you, mm -hmm. for you, it's true, right? So, and our beliefs are the rules that we live by. So whatever I believe to be true is going to shape what I think. It's going to shape what I say. It's going to impact what I do. And that's what brings results. So it's, it's that whole chain reaction. So as coaches, if we can help you change your thoughts, if as coaches, we work to help you shift your mindset so that it shifts your, your, um, you know, your feelings as well. And your, your, your thoughts and feelings and the things that you say and do become really what results you get in, in your business and in your life. And Mar thank you, Meralda and Margaret, what, what are some of your thoughts around mindset and how you've helped agents with theirs? Um, it's really believing that it's possible for them, you know, it's having that belief um, and encouraging, you know, where they're doing well and where they're, you know, we start with the validation of their KPA, you know, and what their natural gifts and talents are. For, for, those, of a, for those of us who are not with Keller Williams listening, what is a KPA? Uh, it's a Keller personality assessment yep. and sort of like the um, old... Uh, Anthony Robbins disc, where it just separates out your personality um, segments, what your pre preferences are, and so forth. Yeah, it's a tool that we use to assess the way uh, people might approach a situation through communication, behavior. Um, and if anyone's interested in learning more about that KPA, just let one of us know. And we'll, because you don't have to be a Keller Williams. It, it is a, an internal tool that we've developed, but it can be valuable to anyone who might be listening or watching this. So just reach out to one of us and we'll help you with that. So, um, Anne Margaret, what, um, in your opinion, we've talked a lot about success and mindset. So for, for some people who are watching and really want to create a, a game plan, to have better results or be more effective, more successful in their business. What are four or five qualities you think that 
uh, people need to develop to really be uh, able to reach that higher potential of success? Um, I mean, I would say a drive and passion, you know, is where, um, you know, they're excited every day about what they're doing and it feels more like play than it feels like work. While at the same time, having a bit of drive and a competitive edge, pulling that all together can fuel you to reaching your goals. Awesome. Moralda, what are your thoughts on that? What are some qualities that hmm. successful people have? Well, the first one for me is self-discipline. Um, that's number one, uh, belief, curiosity, um, a risk taker, right? Sometimes you have to think out of that box, do things differently, go upstream. Sure. Um, and good communication skills. I think that's okay. extremely important as well. Yeah, sure. Let's go back to one that you said, self-discipline. Mm -hmm. You know, having discipline, because I think a lot of people work on that um, and or try to work on that. And uh, talk, talk to us just a little bit more about what that is, discipline, and how that helps. Well, as with everything, right, we have self-discipline discipline with ourselves, even if we work with, with our um, with dieting, with, with anything. If you have that, you're going to move forward. These are the traits you need to be successful. So you have to, you can't just you have to practice what you preach, right? So that's self-discipline. You have to stick to your schedule. You have to make a plan. You have to plan those strategies and you have to put everything into action. You can't just set things up and, okay, let that go. So you really do need to be um, on top of yourself. You do. You have to check yourself. You have to um, take a look at yourself. Put your ego aside. Um, and learn from your mistakes. So self-discipline to me is the number one thing you need in order to be successful. Yeah, I think self-discipline is what builds the habits, right? Yes, and it's, exactly. it's so the ha our habits can be good. They can, well, good, bad, right? They can be power empowering or they can hold us back because, you know, those habits are what we do repeatedly, right? Without thinking too much. And again, that's our behavior pattern. So that's what brings those results we just talked about. So I agree. I think discipline is very big. And I think the thing is, if you can, if you can create discipline in one area of your life, you can create discipline in other areas of your life. So it's like a muscle, right? When you go to the gym and you get stronger, discipline is very much like that. So, um, so discipline is one of the things you say would be a successful, a, a trait successful people have. Um, and uh, the other one that you mentioned, um, uh, now it just flew right out of my head. Ah! Um, we'll so see, what did I say? Self-motivation. Uh, a risk, a risk okay. taker. Please. Risk taker, that's what I wanted to go back on. See, it's live TV people, risk taker. That's what I wanted to go back to. So I think that's another one, right? That a lot of a lot of people behaviorally are in different categories. And I respect that. Some of us are much more comfortable with risk than others. But I think mm -hmm. the term risk brings up image, right? Imagery in people's minds. And when you say risk taker, what is it that you're really thinking of in the context of being successful in, in real estate and in business in general? I just think that you do need to think out of the box, especially now, right? With the new norm, we're doing things differently. So don't be afraid to try new things. Yeah. I mean, even, even with this, I'm going to be perfectly honest, even with Zoom, I was so afraid of Zoom. Why? I have no idea because it's the same thing as standing in front of a room of people. Um, so you do need to start to do things a little differently. And not to be afraid. If it doesn't work, so what? Move on to the next. So you do need, and successful people are all risk takers. Yeah. Right? If you don't try it, you'll never know. Yeah, never I think anywhere. you. You know, it's a matter. Uh, we have uh, Meryl on the line or in the chat here saying she definitely needs help with self discipline. You're not alone, girl. Yeah, uh, we all do. <laughs> yeah, and I think that you know, back to the risk being able to take some risk. I, I, I love what you said about thinking out of the box and doing things differently right now. You know, if nothing changes, nothing changes. And the world is changing very quickly around us. So we have to be willing to move forward with it. And so that that is part of being successful in business, you know, is not being locked into doing it the same way 
you know, that you did it 15 years ago, or maybe even 15 minutes ago. Exactly. <laughs> you know? I mean, there's a lot to be said about systems. I'm going to jump to my friend Rita, because she loves systems. I don't know if you know that about her. Um, there's system. a lot to be said about systems and structure and following a model, right? But I think that that's, well, you tell me, where does that fit in with being, you know, a risk taker or thinking out of the box, like Meralda says? So I think that it's definitely a, a great idea to, oh, and I think part of being creative is being growth minded, not ever feeling like you know it all, but always acknowledging that there's more you can learn and do better. But I think that you can't have creativity until you have structure and systems, right? Because if you don't have a structure and a system set up first to then get creative from, it can go sideways. And we learned that in the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book that you were holding up. That's one of the you know pillars of the things that we coach and train our agents on. And so I think that all of the things that um, Anne Margaret and Meralda said are, are really, really important. And in addition to that, once you're in that positive mindset and you're ready to take a risk, you also have to look at what is your business plan and what are those goals, right? And is it a calculated risk? that you're actually taking into consideration what the, the logical steps are and what the desired outcome is. And that, that can be just as important. And, and I think um, answering Meryl's question, can somebody that's not self-disciplined learn it? I think with the right structure and system, you absolutely can. And also developing what the goals are. I think goals can, can create self-discipline and self-motivation if it's the right goal as long as it's the right goal, then that instinct, instinctively that self-discipline can show up. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I think, like I said, it's like a muscle that will build on, on that. So are there any other qualities that you would add to the list that we've, you know, besides what we've already talked about, Rita, that you, you know has to be a part of that person's mindset and behavior to, to move them forward to successful outcomes? I think when you're talking about um, newly licensed agents or emerging agents, they have to have a level of confidence. And I think that that can be difficult because it's a brand new uh, career. So for a lot of people, it's a career change. For a lot of people, it might be the first time that they're in a sales position or a commission-based you know, position. And, and so um, you have to have the confidence to believe that you do have the skills, the resources, the tools of coaching and training here at Keller Williams that you need in order to be successful. And, and what, I, what I see with the agents that I coach is the ones that come in with the confidence and the, the mindset that they do have what it takes to, to grow a business are the ones that, that then are receptive to putting a system and a model in place and then executing on it. Yeah, for sure. Um... I think, you know, you talked about the business plan and you talked about having a model to follow and you talked about predictability. And I think that's important too, right? This is not um, just throw it out the wall and see what sticks, especially, you know, for us at Keller Williams, that is why we're so committed to coaching. And, you know, for anyone who's not clear or who's never worked with a coach, um, you know, coaching is a partnership between us, the coach, and you, the agent. Uh, or the business, you know, person, and it's really a collaboration where we're helping you, and sometimes we're helping you figure it out first, right, what your goals are, articulating it, creating the right plan and the systems that will get you there, um, and it's about accountability, too, so that you can stay on track and really, you know, move forward, um, and in doing all of that, we're really helping you examine you know, what you're doing every day, because what you're doing every day is building that momentum, those habits. Um, and so I'm going to ask uh, Anne Margaret maybe to start us off on this question. What are some daily habits that agents need to commit to uh, in their business to really be successful? Um, you know, having their goals at the forefront and really committing to working on that 80, 20% rule that we hear all the time. Um, what and does getting, that mean, the 80, 20? <laughs> so, you know, that 20% of your effort is gonna bring 80% of your results. And I guess what it means in terms of putting it into our businesses, you know, what are those activities that we can separate out from that, 
you know, I was one to always build huge, long page, long to do lists. And, you know, you're lucky if you get to a quarter of those items a day. So really getting comfortable with drilling down to, I still make the great big list. Then I drill down, you know, and keep drilling down till I get to that one thing and sort of look at it as unitasking versus multitasking. Whereas mm -hmm. I would try to do four, five, six things in a day, you know, I still struggle with having 20 tabs open on my computer at a time. Um, but I'm really so learning. Yeah, so what you're saying is that an agent really has to identify their priorities every day and know that uh, that 80-20 thing, uh, the 80-20 rule is really knowing that just a small percentage of the things you think you need to do are the ones that should really have most of your time and energy, right? So what is one of those 20% activities, Anne margaret that an agent should focus on? You know, would be time blocking and consistently doing their lead generation and most importantly, consistently following up uh -huh. and building. Because we set sometimes the time aside for lead generation and where we lose it is in the follow-up. So that is so true. System. There's an old saying, you know, um, the fortunes in the follow up. And it's true because you can you can really like lay some groundwork uh, in, in those first conversations. But it's really I think the conversion shows up in the follow up and being able to, you know, get back around to someone because the first no is not always no period. It may be no, not now. Right. So. Yeah, Meralda, what are your thoughts on uh, the daily habits? What are some daily habits? We've heard lead generation and time blocking. Anything else? Well, the very first thing I think that we all need to do is schedule enough time in the morning for ourselves uh -huh. to get a relaxing start to our day. I think that's the most important thing. Instead of last minute running around, grabbing things, um, that doesn't work. So you do need to set some time for yourself in the morning start your day correctly, um, establish a routine, you know, which is of course, you know, time blocking is the, establishing your routine. Have a calendar, stick to that calendar. Um, like we will say, if it's not on our calendar, it doesn't exist for me, that is so true. true. Um, this is very important. And you have to truthfully, like we will say too, build that bumper around your schedule. Don't divert. Yes, sometimes we have to, but of course, if we do change something on our schedule, you have to replace it. So these are things that um, I think are very good daily habits that we must adhere to. And of course, the you know, lead generate daily, like Dan said, very important. Follow up, extremely important. You know, leverage systems, technology, personal. These are all things that um, are great daily habits for a successful person to have. Awesome. Uh, Rita, what are your thoughts on the daily habits? Um, I, I agree. I think uh, lead generation, right, following a schedule. And then I also think that planning time is very important. And that putting planning time into your day every day, preferably first thing in the morning, can be a really powerful way to have an effective day and to end the day at the end of the day, knowing that you actually moved your business forward instead of just worked, you know, in your business to keep your head above water. And so um, when uh, maybe two, probably around three years ago now, I implemented a morning routine that included planning time. Mm -hmm. And the difference I saw in my own business was unbelievable. And, and not just the difference in growth in my business, but the, um, my mindset around the day and also my work life balance, because if I had some planning time, I knew what my priorities would be for the day. So if you know what your priorities are for the day, as long as you get those done, you can stop working at six o'clock right? Or five o'clock or three o'clock if you have a soccer, your kid's soccer game to go to, as long as you, you understand what actually needed to get done, what, are, what were those 20% activities? What were your, I generally tell the people I'm coaching no more than three priorities a day because you're not, you're not really reasonably going to get done more than that because you do need time to do all of the other stuff that comes along. But I think that planning time can help you each day move the needle forward. Yeah, you know, I love that. And I'm going to add to that. John Maxwell talks about planning time. He also talks about time to reflect, right? Mm -hmm. So where you have time to plan for where you want to go with your day, 
are you taking time to digest the day and reflect on what you learned today and how you want to implement it, what needs to get done tomorrow? Uh, and, and reflection certainly doesn't have to only be about work and, and career. It can be about, you know, something personal and spiritual as well. So I love that. What is part of your morning routine, Rita? So I wake up, I write in a business journal. Um, so I have a journal, it's all business related topics. And it's exactly like you said, that's more of a reflection. So what have I done well so far? What do I, what am I working on? What are maybe limiting beliefs I have around my own business that I need to just get on paper and be able to admit and think about? Um, so I do that. And then I set my priorities for the day. I usually try to stick to no more than three. I have a binder that's always next to me where I write the priorities for the, the day. And I have, you know, other columns for different long-term projects and so on and so forth. So I look at that. Um, and then I am generally reading uh, some type of business or, you know, personal growth book. And, and I don't read for an hour. I read for about 10 minutes. So it's maybe, you know, 10 to 15 pages a day. Right now I'm reading the hold book, which is part of the series that Keller Williams put out. This one in particular is about, you know, growing an investment portfolio. So that's what I've been reading in the morning and that's it. And all together, it, it's a half an hour. So it's not, it's not a huge investment in time. Um, but when I started doing my morning routine that way, I saw a really significant difference in how I felt um, during the day and also in how much quicker I was able to grow my business each day because I was being purposeful with that planning time to get clear on my goal. Awesome. Um, Anne Margaret and Meraldo, do you have something that is part of your morning routine? Put up a pot of coffee. <laughs> I love that. That gets me going. That gets me going. <laughs> Okay, Margaret, do you have anything you want to add as part of your morning? A little morning? bit similar, a little bit similar to, you know, what Rita said about taking time to plan, journal, and read, um, and try to do a little bit of physical activity. Good. Even if it's 10 or 15 minutes of stretching, walking, just something yeah. to kind of get moving. Yeah, it sounds like we're all following the outline of the Miracle Morning, right? Is that, how many of you read yes. that book? Yeah, so for anyone who hasn't, it's, it's a short, easy read. Uh, very impactful, but it's basically making a decision about how you spend the first hour of your day. And yes, coffee, uh, reading, meditating or praying, journaling, and getting some activity, as well as taking time to express gratitude or love, you know, hug someone that you're with, even if it's the cat, it's okay. Um, and uh, it's a great way to start your day. So the book is The Miracle Morning. Miracle Morning. There's a real so. estate one too that's specifically the miracle, the Miracle Morning for real estate agents. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I'm going to ask. I know we have some people here with us in the chat, uh, in the Zoom. Sorry, if you have some questions, you can either come off mute or use the chat. Um, is there anything that you would like to ask any of us about productivity coaching? Anything that we talked about something. today, really? Hi, good morning. This is Elizabeth. How are you? Good, Elizabeth. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I haven't really participated. I mean, I've been participating and just listening to some of these meetings, but I haven't contributed. And I have to say that this morning's uh, meeting is so motivating and so informative. And I I'm really glad that I tuned in because there's some really good gems here. I actually found myself scrambling for a notebook to write down all these things because they're really practical and, and things you've heard in the past, but you kind of need to hear over and over. Right. Um, my question would be, I'm a dual career agent. Okay. So I have a full-time job and I have three children under eight. <laughs> so, you know, I haven't really, I mean, I focus on my real estate, but it's, it's something that's like kind of, I don't know how I do it. I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> it's just something that's going on in the background as I'm trying to juggle everything in my life. And I'm wondering if the coaches have any suggestions for a person such as myself. I, I find that I'm now kind of focusing more and I, I'm getting more activity in real estate. I'm excited about it. Um, but, and, and this morning stuff sounds really good. I want to start doing more of that. But is there any suggestions you have in particular for dual career agents? 
So I was a dual career agent when I first started. I worked, um, I've been selling, I also sell real estate in addition to coaching for the first about year and a half. I worked um, as a paralegal and I wanted to quit that job. So I uh, worked, you know, as much as I could full time in real estate, but it's tough and it's impossible to work too you don't, there's not, there's only 24 hours in the day. And so actually the advice that Anna gave me that I found very helpful when I was a newly licensed agent was to really, I was her coach for a while. <laughs> she was my coach and is to really decide how many hours can you commit to your real estate business and be realistic, right? If you're working 40 hours and you, ha and there's another 10 or 15 hours of um, you know, activities that you're doing with your children, then be really realistic with yourself about how many hours can you commit to your, to your real estate business and then w work with your coach once you have that design to make sure that those hours are really purposeful. So you add those hours to your calendar as your real estate business block of time. And then with, once you get into that block of time, if it's 10 or 15 hours, that's great. Once you get into that block of time, then it should be really keeping in mind the 80-20 principle, figuring out what are your 20% activities, which we know is lead generation, lead follow-up, going on appointments. How do you spend most of that 10, 15, 20 hours that you can commit to working in real estate doing just those activities. And you'll find that the rest of the things that we have to do will fall into place. But if, but if you're really able to prioritize in that way, um, you should be able to run an, an effective schedule while you're doing both. Awesome, thank you so much. I appreciate that. You're welcome. It is possible. It's definitely possible. <laughs> no, I'm really excited because like I was saying, I have some activity going on now with listings and buyers and you know and since we're going into the summer break because i work in the school system i'm hoping to be able to do a lot more you know throughout the, the next few months so and then you know to establish a good routine while i am working because you know but what you just said about blocking out time makes a lot of sense thank you so much you're welcome well, thanks for asking the question and anyone else have any questions for any of the coaches before we wrap this up Meryl said she ordered the Miracle Morning book. Yay! Yeah, that's good great. Job. That's good. great. Yeah. Oh, great book. So um, I think what we're going to do is schedule another session, another uh, coffee with the coaches, and I think that we're going to talk on the next one all about goals. I think we can talk about you know like how we help uh, agents set their goals, what what they should be looking at in terms of goal setting and tracking. Uh, and the accountability around it. And I think we should also talk about uh, personal goals, right? And a personal growth plan, because another thing that I know is important to us as coaches and at Keller Williams is that we coach the whole person. And so it's, you know, your business and the goals that you have personally, because your business only grows to the extent that you do. So we, we really take that balanced approach. And while you know, the focus is on uh, real estate training and sales training and development and business coaching uh, and, and the tools to help you become uh, a better agent. It is also about helping you grow into the best person you can be because those personal habits, like you've heard on this call about, you know, being, um, the habits around being growth minded and being learning based and having the discipline and the structure and time blocking. Those are the things that, uh, you know, it, it, those are the things that can get in your way of success because at the end of the day, everybody has a copy of this book or has access to it anyway. And everybody has the same tools, right? But why is it that some of the agents or some people can achieve success at a very high level and others struggle. And I think that's, you know, where we came into the mindset and the habits. And that's why I think the next um, session of co Coffee with the Coaches, we should really dive into goal setting. What do you ladies think? Definitely. Absolutely. Sounds good. Good. All right. Well, is there anything in closing that you would like to add? Um, is, there, is there anything about what we've talked about that we didn't say before we sign off? 
Just following up on what you said, and I think that, like we say a lot at Keller Williams, the the purpose of your business is to fund your perfect life. And so you do, it's not just business for business sake. It's really how can you um, create the income you want to hit your goal. So I'm ex super excited to talk about that next time, not just your maybe financial goals, but your personal goals and your own growth goals. And when you tie everything together, that's really how you can live a fulfilling big life and, you know, build one for yourself. Yes, without a doubt. Your business grows to the extent that you do, right? Right. So that's and that's, that's what, what motivates. Yeah, and that's what motivates us as coaches, right? We want to see the success. We want to see the growth for all of our agents. And um, I will just say, if there's anyone watching who is in real estate, at Keller Williams or not, um, and you are at a in a position right now where you would like to see your business grow, and you don't have someone that you're working with as a coach. Um, you know, whether you're in our offices and maybe you're not currently working with one of the coaches or you're in a different real estate company and you want to really talk with us more one-on-one, -on -one, don't, please don't hesitate to reach out. I mean, we're here to help, you know, my, my commitment to helping people through coaching doesn't start and stop because of the name on your business card. I'm here to help you uh, or on your name badge. So we're here to help you. So please reach out and let us know if there's something we can do to support you and uh, you know, we can, you can find us here through uh, Facebook, certainly. Um, so ladies, thank you so much for your time. It was a really great conversation once again, um, but I wanna be mindful of everyone's schedule and allow you to get back to the rest of your day. So we appreciate you guys um, who have plugged into this and we'll let you know when the next one is, probably in a week or two, and uh, we're gonna dig into uh, goal setting next time. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day. You too. Thank you so much. Bye. Take care. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.